happy Halloween, a Push Nation. And no, I am not Tony Stark, but I've been told I look like him, especially when I had that gross beard going on all the last month. But nonetheless, here we go. Our Halloween edition of the A-Push Nation Fireside Chat. Tonight's topic are foreign and border disputes in James Monroe's presidency, which is really going to wrap up the Air of Good Feelings for us tomorrow. It's been a pleasure dealing with the Air of Good Feelings, but here we go. Okay, so the United States was in precarious situations, uh, both internally within our modern-day con uh, continental borders and also in the Western Hemisphere. And the root cause of a lot of the foreign policy issues that stem during James Monroe's presidency uh, let's start first with the Spanish, because at the time, the Spanish still maintained control of Florida. And Spanish Florida had long been uh, a vestige for runaway slaves to escape to. Think back to the Stono Rebellion uh, in the 1730s. But also, uh, Florida was heavily colonized um, by the Spanish going back to the 1500s. But over time, Spain, as empire had weakened, Native Americans began to really take root um, and strongly dig in and defend Florida uh, against American expansion. And what started to happen was Native Americans in the northern part of Florida, especially the Seminole tribe, yes, like the Florida State Seminoles, the mascot of the uh, the football team, the Seminole Nation uh, was, was a strong uh, base, had a strong base of operations in northern Florida, and they began attacking American settlers over in Georgia. Well, this created a conflict and a controversy for the Monroe administration because, again, Georgia was part of the United States, uh, and you have Native Americans attacking white settlers in Georgia. And a lot of the Seminole Nation uh, Native Americans that were attacking Americans in Georgia uh, were actually being armed by the British. Surprise, surprise, those darn Brits, and they just won't leave Americans alone. Um, so Florida becomes quite the hotbed issue uh, during Monroe's second term. And we're looking here about the end of the 1810s, so 1819, 1820. But the American government's going to stay in conflict with the Seminole Nation for into the 1830s and 40s. There are numerous wars with the Seminole tribe. Uh, and so in the southern part, southeastern part of America, there are conflicts with the Seminole are, are perpetual. So how does Monroe deal with this crisis? Well, he sends in Andrew Jackson. And Andrew Jackson was the hero of the War of 1812. He was a rising uh, general and soon to become a political hero as well. And Andrew Jackson's uh, constant conflicts uh, with Native Americans throughout his career made him an optimal choice to invade Florida. But there is the key, invade Florida. Jackson was never given the orders to invade Florida, but he did anyways. Uh, this is a classic case of uh, the, the fog of war. Um, Jackson took matters into his own hands. Uh, he was sent to defend Georgians from the Seminole, but instead Jackson invaded Florida and almost triggered uh, a war with Spain. However, using diplomacy, the American government would avoid all-out war with Spain and in the process of negotiating with Spain over the, the Seminole Wars, the United States actually gains Florida territory. How about that? And the death work of John Quincy Adams was really uh, who helped negotiate uh, the treaty to sign Florida over to the United States. And the treaty was, and this is a shout out to our seventh period guy, the adams onice Treaty, not to be confused with the adam o -Meist Treaty, but hey, if that helps you remember it, the adams onice O-N-I-S, the adams onice Treaty. So that's how Florida becomes a territory in the United States, but, but, but Florida's still got a ways to go before it is a state here. So for right now, Florida is simply a territory, and the wars with the Seminoles would actually now increase, as you can imagine, uh, due to the fact that Jackson... Uh, and others had instigated conflict, and by invading Florida without uh, orders, uh, that started a whole conflict. But then now that Florida is the United States territory, that's only going to make the conflict heat up. Heat up. Um, now, the, the Spanish would be also sort of pestering the United States government in other regions of, of the Western Hemisphere, predominantly Central and South America. Now, think back to world history here. 
you guys probably would have learned about revolutions breaking out all over Central and South America, chiefly in Mexico in the 1820s, and then also uh, down in South America led by a, game a guy named uh, Simon Bolivar. And Simon Bolivar would go on to lead numerous revolutions all over the, the, South, the, the, the South American hemisphere. And meanwhile, Mexico would be independent of Spain in 1821. Now, how does this impact the U.S.? Well, all those wars taking place in Central and South America put the United States on high alert because you have all these European armies, uh, predominantly Spain, maneuvering into our, our, our backyard, really. And this is where you start to see the United States become much more aggressive than it ever had before in foreign policy. You know, we talked about how uh, Jefferson showed, a, uh, showed strength by um, sending the Navy against the Barbary Pirates and obviously James Madison uh, with the War of 1812. But James Monroe, in December of 1823, made a speech in front of Congress. And I'm going to read for you a quote. It's a very short quote. But Monroe met with Congress and delivered his annual address. And he made a very strong assertion. And here's what Monroe said. The American continents are henceforth not to be considered as subjects for future colonization by any European powers. Boy, that was a strong message. Think about that for a second. The United States, a, a, a yearling, which is the term from horse racing, as for a young horse, a yearling, you know, a rookie, not yet a, a national, a, a, a international power is telling European countries to stay out of our business. Don't meddle in the Western Hemisphere. No colonization, no problem. Colonization, problem. I hope you see where we're going with this. This is a pretty audacious maneuver by Monroe. And where did it come from? Well, Monroe's Secretary of State at the time, John Quincy Adams, I already mentioned that. John Quincy Adams would take this, this idea put forth by Monroe in his speech to Congress, and Quincy Adams would turn Monroe's idea into a full-on American foreign policy that is going to last well into the early 1900s. And the policy is simply known as the Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine it was unquestionably one of the strongest, boldest moves in American foreign policy history. James Monroe set down the gauntlet for the rest of Europe, basically warning Europe to stay out of the Western Hemisphere. Do not mess in the backyard of the United States. And for a country that was so still green, so still young and trying to prove itself, for the U.S. to make that strong of an assertion was a radically audacious doctrine. And the Monroe Doctrine is going to stand the test of time. Future American presidents are going to use the Monroe Doctrine to make claims on land acquisitions. They're going to use the Monroe Doctrine to make claims on going to war. They're going to use the Monroe Doctrine uh, to, to try to negotiate further treaties. And almost immediately, um, the Monroe Doctrine is put to the test because of everything going on down in Central America and South America. But there's also uh, tensions with uh, Russia because Russia, uh, which had, had claimed Alaska, uh, you know, is, is also uh, in the northern hemis uh, North American hemisphere, uh, and Russia and the United States will, will have border disputes, as well as the United States and Britain, with disputes over land in Canada. So the Monroe Doctrine was a warning. I want you to always think of the Monroe Doctrine in that way. It was a strong, stiff warning to the rest of the European nations not to mess with the United States. And if you think about where the United States is evolving here at this point, you know, 50 years ago, the United States wasn't even a country, and now it's telling Europeans to stay out of its territories, to, not to colonize, not to meddle in the American uh, side of the world is just an unprecedented and strong show of force. We'll be back at it tomorrow in class. I want to get into that reading on the corrupt bargain of 1824. So yes, I know it's Halloween and boo, Mr. Smith, for ruining everybody's opportunity to trick or treat, but I stayed under 10 minutes. So you're welcome on that. I'll see you guys back at it tomorrow. Take care. And remember the past shapes the future. <laughs>